Okay, we got uh, one minute more. Okay, it's already 5 a.m. Let's all rise. Let's begin our good day by offering one standing bow to our beloved two parents. And then go out to something one day. Look at their day. Jimbe. Baro. Most of the heavenly parents today, Monday, September 8, 2014, we pray for the victory and the protection and the success of our true mother here on earth and true father in heaven. And we pray as well for the true family, the true children, true grandchildren, and all the members that are attending to them. We pray as well for our Family Federation for World Peace International Headquarters that is based on Tunkin, and we pray for our Elder Sister Sanjanin and her husband, Isofu, that are now leading the World Mission Headquarters. We pray for their success always, as we pray for all the UPF Chairman, our Dr. Chang Shikyang, and all the international vice presidents. Thomas Wang and all the continental leaders all over the world, especially here in North America and the Caribbean. We pray for Archbishop Kim Kim and his family, and we pray as well for all the national leaders and their staff in all parts of the world, especially here in America, in New York, New York. We pray for our president of our church, Reverend Dr. Michael Bob and his wife, Kimiko, and children, and his staff there at Forest Workers Street. We pray for their success as they look upon the list of all members that they have open since many seventies. We pray that they can reach all these members that are connecting to our true parents since then. And we pray for the success of the event on the celebration of the second death anniversary of Osumu of our on September 30th, 20th, in Manhattan Center in New York. Also. And we pray for all the districts and regions all over the world, especially here in District 1. We pray for our elder, our director of, of District 1. Reverend Ernest Patton and his wife, Keiko Patton, and their children. And we pray as well for all the pastors, center leaders of all our churches and centers here in America and all over the world. 
and we pray particularly here in mid the mid Atlantic area. We pray for Reverend James Stewart and his wife on the in Tulsa Center in Maryland. We pray as well for their congregation there that they will expand. We pray for the Norfolk area. We pray for Reverend Akira Oka and in Richmond, in Virginia, we pray for Father Adrian Byer and his wife Anna Sun. And in the Beltway, we pray for Northern Virginia. We pray for Ms. June and all the members there. And we pray also for the Maryland area and the Reverend Neil Stevens and his wife and all the co pastors like Reverend Jim Boothby and Ms. Jones and others. And we pray for the Washington, D.C. area. We pray for the chairman of the ACLC who is living here, Archbishop Augustus Collins and his wife, and all the members of the Amer American Clergy and Leadership Conference all over America. And we pray also for our pastor, Reverend Gregory James Oliver, and his wife, Melissa and Dora Brian. We pray for their and unity and we pray as well for our church council and all the blessed members who are connected to our church. We pray for the success of all our activities for these coming weeks like the checkpoint every other week and lectures of the Divine Principle on Saturdays and all Sunday services and we pray for the success of everyone who is even watching our playback today. And we pray all of this in all our names and in my name, Athanasius Francis Ikatalan, blessed and good friend, Arju, Arju. Uh, good morning. We're still uh, reading about the world scriptures and the teachings of our father, Reverend Sun Myung Moon. And We are now on page four, five, six. The teachings of our father about Joseph, about Joseph's path from prison to a great destiny. A seemingly chance encounter may be fraught with destiny. So we should not take anything casually. You know the story of jo Joseph. His brothers put him in a well thinking to kill him. But they sold him instead and he was brought to Egypt as a slave. There the wife of his master, Potiphar, tried to seduce him. And when he would not be tempted, she had him in prison. While in prison and awaiting the day of his execution, he interpreted Pharaoh's dream and was raised to the rank of Prime Minister of Egypt. How in the midst of his misery could Joseph have even imagined that such good fortune would befall him. Yet this 
things opened the way for him to save the Israelites who could have known that it would turn out that way likewise if I had not been or had been sent to Hunnam prison for three years I would never have committed myself to eradicate communism from this earth with my own hands. I would not have known the reality of communism. He would have simply dismissed it as, as just another philosophy. It was in the prison that I experienced communist first hand. You cannot imagine the cruelty and misery of life in that prison. Yet out of my experience I there I resolved to liberate all people who suffered under the communist yoke. The inmates of that prison faced all kinds of evils. Many of them perish. Yet in that awful place, a miracle occurred. Something unexpected happened in my life that would have, that would one day change history. Cause, or with open bracket, cause communism to fall. Close bracket. When you consider this how observant you should be in everything you do uh, and at every moment you should be able to digest any situation you encounter. This is absolutely necessary for your life as a human being. If you live your life with this attitude, success will walk by your side. If you do not, success will always be two steps ahead of you. For example, suppose while walking down the street you trip over a crack and knock down a young lady who happens to be walking beside you, sending her to the hospital with a broken ankle. You visit her in the hospital befriend her, in time she becomes a church member and gains eternal life. Looking back on that accident, do not think she will curse you or be grateful that it happened. She would say, it's amazing. I'm so glad that my uncle was broken. Thank you, uncle. Amen. And I add proudly, in all of history, there is no one who was witness to the way I was. Therefore, do not pray. Please, God, guard me from getting into a car accident. Instead, think that a car accident could be the opportunity that opens the door to many unexpected blessings. Who knows the future? You cannot see. So how do you know whether to complain about your situation or be grateful? Since you do not know, be grateful. That is the attitude of a wise person. This is from a speech on November 4, 1990. People in prison fit into two categories. One category is criminals who violate the legitimate interest of society for selfish reasons and broke the law. Even Satan's world does not like such people. The second category is godly people who are disliked by people in Satan's world. Since people in Satan's world are God's enemies. They target the people on God's side for imprisonment. Everyone in prison 
everyone who is executed under Satan's sovereignty belongs in uh, to one of these two categories. This has been so throughout history. God uses the imprisonment of godly people to cut the satanic net that covers this world and by casting heaven's net to connect all people to the rope of God's love. Even though the powers of the satanic world put a godly person in prison, they cannot handle him or digest him. Eventually, they will have to pay a penalty. When a person whom Satan's world imprisons loves God more intensely than Satan's people love in their self-centered way, he creates a problem for Satan's world. It will have to pay compensation a millionfold. Why? Satan knows that he should belong to God and be under the authority of God's realm of true love. Therefore, as long as God is alive, when someone is exhibiting true love, Satan cannot show his face. If he nevertheless causes any harm to come to that person, he will have to pay a heavy price for eternity. This is the very strategy of God. Often in the past, God sent his beloved children into a situation where they would stand up for righteousness and purposely make problems for the evil world. They would be imprisoned and sometimes even executed. Yet by killing God's children, the satanic world has to has had to pay compensation for thousands of years. By this strategy, God could expand the foundation of religion throughout the world. And this is from a speech in August 20, 1987. And now we have a third subtopic. Joseph meets his brothers and reconciles with them. I think Reverend Ezra can continue with his reading. <laughs> and we read subtopic 3 Joseph meets his brothers and reconciles with them it's very interesting to read this Jacob learned that there was a grain in Egypt he said to his sons why do you look at one another behold I heard that there is grain in Egypt go down and buy grain for us there that we may live and not die so ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt but Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he feared that harm might befall him. Thus the, the sons of Israel came to buy among the others who came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph asked governor over the land, he, wo he it was who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers and knew them, and he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to them. Where do you come from? He said, They say, 
from the land of Canaan to buy food. Thus Joseph knew his brothers, but they did not know him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamt of them, and he said to them, You are spies. You have come, turning to page 460, you have come to see the, wicked, the weakness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord, but to buy food have your servants come. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. He said to them, No, it is the weakness of the land that you have come to see. And he said, We are servants. Uh, we, your servants, are twelve brothers, the son of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I say to you, you are spies. Mm -hmm. By this shall be tested by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Now famine was so was severe in the land, and when they had eaten the grain from uh, which they had bought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little food, take also your brother, and arise, go again to the man, and may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man. And he said, Send back your other brother and, and Benjamin. If I bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the men took the, pre uh, the present and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. And they arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house, and slaughter an animal, and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. Then Joseph made haste, for his heart yearned to, for his brother, and he sought a place to weep, and entered his chamber, and wept there. Then he commanded the steward of his house, Fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest with his money for the grain and he said as Joseph and he did as Joseph told him as Joseph as the morning was light the men were sent away with their asses when the men when they had gone but a short distance from the city Joseph said to, the, to his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why did you return evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? <laughs> when Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there, and they fell before him uh, to the ground. Joseph said to them, "Why did it? Why? What did? What did is this 
that you have done? Do you know that such a man as I can, I can indeed divine? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are all my Lord's slaves. Both are both we and he also. In whose hand the cup was has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my slave. But as for you, go, uh, go up in peace with, uh, to your father. Then Judah went up to him and said, O oh my Lord, let your servant, I pray, I pray you, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not, and let, and let, uh, sorry, and let your your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servant, saying. Have you a father or a brother? And he said to my Lord, We have a father and an old man and a young brother. And the child was of his old age, and his brother is dead. And he alone is left of his mother's children. And his father's love, and his father loves him. Then you say to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes upon him. We say to my Lord, that the lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Then you say to your servants, Unless your younger brother comes down, with you, you shall not see my face no more. When we went back to our servant, my father, to your servant, my father, and told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, Go again, buy a little food, he said, We cannot go down. If your youngest, if our youngest brother does not goes with us, then we will go down, for we cannot see the man face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons, one left me, and he said, Surely, he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from, him, uh, from me, and harm befalls him, you will bring down my gray hairs in sorrow to show. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father and the lad is not with us, then he is, as his life is bound up in the lad's life. When he sees that we, the lad is not with us, he will die, and your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to the shore. For your servants became surety for the lad of my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame in the sight of my father all my life. Now therefore, 
Let your servant, I pray you, remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord, and let the lad go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the lad is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would come upon my father. Then Joseph could not control himself, all those who stood by him. And he cried, Make everyone go out from me. So, so no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians had it, and the, the household of Pharaoh had it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, as is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold to e into Egypt. And now do not be dis distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two, uh, two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you the remnant of the earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a, fa a father to Pharaoh, and Lord to all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Make haste and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't, do not die. This is from the book of Genesis, chapter 42, verses 1 to 45, point 9. Yeah, uh, it's already 5.32. Uh, we now have from uh, here, page 4.61, Teachings of Sang Myang Moon. Uh, I think we can continue to read that tomorrow. And, uh, and uh, uh, we can now go back to what we have read uh, today in uh, our Hundoke about the story of Joseph, uh, uh, we have heard uh, about uh, his, his dreams and then Joseph path to the prison to a great destiny uh, and the teachings of Sun Myung Moon explains the depth of and principles that <coughs> always are characterized by men of God in prison for God's sake. And uh, it's very interesting to see uh, Paul and, and Sila were put in prison and how victorious they became. Uh, Joseph, this is Old Testament. <coughs> also went through the same. And we can also see
from true parents, true father being in prison in uh, Hangnam. Uh, after that, that imprisonment uh, came the freedom of South Korea and also the demarcation of the uh, the demitralized zone separating North and South Korea. Of course that was not God's will but at least there was some amount of freedom uh, through which many people including true parents and the prisoners with true father they moved to the south the land of the free freedom from communism and from there true father has built his foundation to uh, to destroy communism which had imprisoned him so we just saw uh, the testimony from uh, Reverend Dr. Bohi Park uh, two Sundays ago how True Father uh, destroyed uh, communism through President Reagan and uh, revealing to Reverend uh, to President Reagan his mission is to destroy communism and which he perfectly did. So um, so we see whenever uh, Mart uh, Martin Luther King Jr. of the United States also for the civil rights uh, liberating the, the African people from uh, their life of discrimination uh, here in America after the 100 years of being freed from slavery they were still could not sit in a bus uh, they were they had uh, uh, these streets where they could not pass through the streets because they were black they could not vote they had no uh, privileges of a human being although the United States Constitution says all men are created equal so Martin Luther King and his uh, uh, revolution uh, fight uh, of uh, peace through peace for uh, the, the government of that time and he went to prison and in his prison again he got victory bigger than just himself uh, and also Rosa Park the one who was uh, uh, denied to sit was also in prison so both of them a man and a woman put in prison gained a big victory for the black people of the United States so and uh, we know also in Africa there were many many uh, fighting for freedom and we know like the president of Kenya was imprisoned in the, a prison that was put all the way up in the desert that he could not even cross from there on his own he could not try to escape there was they were taking food and supplies to the, uh, to the prison guards there and everything for a week and putting him there uh, but after more uh, people started to join in the uh, fighting for the freedom again we can see the power of how God uses uh, that imprisonment and overturns the tables around uh, and again uh, a bigger victory from prison. We have seen Nelson Mandela 27 years of prison and you can see how he has turned the tables around and gained victory both from the prisoners he made them their friends his friends and brought peace and embraced all of them and we see Joseph also from his prison embracing his brothers who imprisoned him so uh, there is a big lesson we we have learned here this morning about uh, the principle that uh, God uses 
when a man of God, a uh, man on God's side is put to prison, there is always a big victory uh, about it. And that's the lesson I wanted to share this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Ezra. Thank you, Brother Ezra. Uh, yes, any reflections? Good morning, Reverend Yeah, just Brother Ezra took my word. <laughs> I only have a couple of words uh, from my mouth. Uh, one of the things that struck me by that sentence was you were talking about Joseph. That whole story of Joseph was sold in slavery by his brother. Yes, thank you, Rabbi. Thank you very much. It was very significant here in Genesis chapter 42. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, and He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Make haste and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. Wow. Mm. Yes, very powerful. Wow. Father Yes, yeah. So it's not your brother. <laughs> Even Judah wants to be a slave instead of his brother yeah. being, uh, uh, you know, left as a slave. You know, but with Joseph. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's very amazing. Yes. Very, it's a, one of the most significant stories of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So even uh, for other also equate uh, the imprisonment of Joseph to himself that when he was in prison a miracle happened yeah and uh, something unexpected you know happened in my life that one day changed history you know and caused communism to fall so uh, in the passage that he, uh, in his speech, when you consider this, how servant 
you should be in everything you do not you do in every moment you should be able to digest any situation you encounter this is absolutely necessary for you, your life as a human being if you live your life with this attitude success will walk by your side it, if you do not success will always be two steps ahead of you so uh, he says further also about uh, in prison there are two categories one category is criminals who violated the legit, legitimate interests of society for selfish reasons and broke the laws and then even Satan's world does not like such people and the second category is godly people who are disliked by people in Satan's world since people in the Satan's world are God's enemies they target the people on God's side for imprisonment. Everyone in prison, everyone who is executed under Satan's sovereignty belongs to one of the, these categories. Mm. This has been so throughout history. So uh, as we read further, uh, they are not only in prison, you know, this uh, people and even the children of God that he sent to, to, to the land, they were even executed. So right. Many saints and sages yeah. were even burned in the stake and then even fed to the lions and, and many other things. Right. But that is a strategy of God, you know, to, uh, that would expand, could expand the foundation of religion throughout the world. So uh, Satan has to pay compensation for thousands of years. Mm. So God's strategy is, you know, sometimes it's contrary to what society really thinks. Yeah. So you go to the lowest point in prison, and even father, when he was sent to prison, he, his headquarters was brought there, and he was making a lot of, you know, uh, plans there, and even. Uh, they sent out many uh, of these tapes to all over the United States to all uh, religious leaders and uh, um, pastors and ministers to know about what we are and about the divine principle and uh, uh, the mission of uh, Reverend Moon to really bring down communism and also promote religious freedom because a lot of you know pastors and religious people are being persecuted also by the society and we will read on about Joseph tomorrow about the teachings of our father and is there anybody else who wants to share about our reading today? So if there is none, let's all rise and have unison prayer. Our most beloved Heavenly Parents, we are so thankful for this reading today about Joseph and your guidance and speeches. We pray our heavenly parents that through we can always connect with you and be and even feel your presence as we read about your words. We thank you for bringing down communism 
and we pray that we can always be with our brothers and sisters and our two mothers before the year 2020, that we can unite North and South Korea. And we pray that there will be thousands and thousands of years of peace because of your dream to bring the world into unity. And we pray that your sacrifices and your maybe of your tears would come to naught, but really to bring about the world of peace and heaven here on earth as you have many, many things for the world or God's kingdom to be here on earth so that we can go to God's kingdom there in the spiritual world or in heaven. We pray that we can share this playback today as we have always brought many things out of the world scriptures and other religions and by our true love, we pray that we can share this to our friends and relatives and for those people that you have prepared us already around here in Washington DC. And we pray all this in all our names and in my name. After national Francis take it along, bless us and I'm a Jew, a Jew, a